Saturday, November 9th would have been the 79th birthday of Carl Sagan if he were still alive or if he were roaming the earth as a zombie. But of course, zombies don't exist, which is exactly the type of misconception that Carl Sagan delighted in disabusing people of. So with that in mind, I thought I would make a tribute video that was five misconceptions about Carl Sagan. Things like the fact that he didn't coin the term billions and billions. He actually said billions upon billions, and it was Johnny Carson mocking him, you know, in a lighthearted way, who ended up popularizing billions and billions. But everybody knows that, so it's not even really a misconception anymore. So I'm going to do five other ones. Uh, the problem is that some studies show that when you tell somebody about a misconception and then you correct it, often they'll walk away from that remembering the misconception as fact and forgetting the correction. So with that in mind, I've decided to give you five completely obviously untrue misconceptions that you can't possibly mistake for fact. So misconception number one. Carl Sagan's real first name is Jennifer, but he was forced to change it by a Hollywood producer. That is not true. What is true and is an in interesting factoid is that Carl Sagan was named after a woman, a woman named Carl. No, uh, a woman named Clara, actually. His mother's mother was named Clara. She uh, died when uh, his mother, Rachel, was very young, but his mother always sort of longed after her, so she named her firstborn after her. And instead of naming him Clara, she went with Carl. Probably a good move. Misconception number two, Carl Sagan liked pot. This is a complete misconception. I see this one everywhere. The, the fact of the matter is Carl Sagan f loved pot. He wrote an article under a pseudonym, Mr. X, which was after his death revealed to be him, in which he talked about how great marijuana was and how he used it to enhance his experiences and even to enhance his ability to do science and to communicate science. And even today, his widow, Andrian, is on the uh, advisory board for NORML, the National Organization for the uh, Reform of Marijuana Laws. So that's pretty awesome. Misconception number three. Carl Sagan is actually an elaborate hoax created and propagated by Andy Kaufman wearing a wig and a turtleneck. This one is definitely wrong. Um, definitely wrong. But, okay, the interesting fact, which actually has nothing to do with Andy Kaufman at all, did you know that Carl Sagan was originally a professor at Harvard, but they wouldn't give him tenure because, probably because, they were a bit annoyed at how he was spending all of his time uh, simplifying science for the general public instead of doing hard research. So luckily, uh, Cornell was very interested in having a superstar science communicator, and they offered him everything he wanted. So he moved to Ithaca, New York. Misconception number four. Carl Sagan lived in an Egyptian-style tomb that overlooked a 200-foot gorge and was once owned by a secret society. The fact is, uh, oh, actually, that one's true. That one's true. Carl Sagan did, in fact, live in an Egyptian-style tomb that overlooked a 200-foot gorge and was once owned by a secret society. It's pretty awesome. The house is a short walk from Sagan's office at Cornell. It was built in the 1920s for a secret society at Cornell called the Sphinx Head Order. They used it as a meeting place. Eventually, they sold it off to a professor who built a house around it. And that professor eventually sold it to Professor Sagan, who owned it until his death. And in fact, Andrian still owns the property. Misconception number five. Carl Sagan was one of the founding members of the men's rights movement. Okay, this one is actually completely false because Carl Sagan was in fact a staunch feminist ally. Uh, there are many indications of this. Um, for instance, his own mother, he would speak of often, was a really awesome, skeptical, feisty woman who Sagan would point out was hampered primarily by the fact that she was a woman in a time when women weren't allowed to do certain things. 
but she still rebelled against a lot of what was expected of women. For instance, she was once kicked off the Coney Island boardwalk for wearing a swimsuit that defied modesty laws at the time. Also, Sagan's only work of fiction, Contact, featured a main protagonist who was a strong, skeptical woman. And this character was actually based on a real life, awesome, skeptical, strong woman named Dr. Jill Tarter. Also, Sagan uh, wrote a now famous letter to his fellow members of the Explorers Club, which at the time was debating whether or not to start including women. And Sagan argued quite passionately for the inclusion of women. Uh, at one point he wrote, if membership in the Explorers Club is restricted to men, the loss will be ours. We will only be depriving ourselves. Plus, if you pick up his collection of essays, Billions and Billions, you'll find in there an essay that details the science surrounding the abortion debate. He wrote it with his wife, Andrean. And you'll find that they 100% supported Roe versus Wade. So there you have it. Five not at all common misconceptions about Carl Sagan. So go out this weekend and celebrate the life of Carl Sagan. I will be celebrating Sagan Day the same way I always do, by riding around on my Carl Sagan themed bike. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. I have a couple of notes to add. Number one, a correction, as a number of you pointed out last week, but I should mention the first person to point out was my friend Burenar. Thank you. Uh, I was talking about DNA in cells and showed an animation of red blood cells, and red blood cells do not have DNA. Uh, well, they do at first, um, they, but eventually as they develop, they lose their nucleus in order to make room for hemoglobin. Who knew? A lot of you, apparently. Sorry about that. Uh, number two, I want you all to know that next weekend I will be at Skepticon in Springfield, Missouri. It's a big free conference. Uh, so it's, uh, and you know, very cheap to come to Springfield and stay in a hotel or on the floor of someone else's hotel room. So I'll put a link in the doobly-doo so you can check that out. And number three, I just want to send out a huge thank you to everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. We've just hit our goal to unlock a monthly Google Hangout with me and all the patrons and special guests who are my friends who you might know, and it'll be a lot of fun. So if you're interested in helping to support me and having a lot of fun in that regard, uh, getting some cool rewards, head on over to patreon.com Rebecca. So thank you very much, everyone.